Get ready for the dictation. Start. Mr. Chairman, sir, the Food Safety and Standards Act legislated in this house is being misused and that is what I would like to bring to the notice of this August house and through you to the notice of the government. It is stated that this is to ensure safety both of food and food materials and to maintain quality and standards. In the name of ensuring standards, there is an attempt to see that small traders are wiped out once and for all. A committee with 50 members has been constituted as regards to the standards to be determined for ensuring quality and they also claim that is in the interest of farmers. Of these 50 members, only two are somewhat connected with food processing and the remaining 48 members are from the corporate world. I wonder how they can ensure quality and standards when it comes to food when they are not directly connected with this at all. With these people, I do not know how they can help the farmers. The laborers are also made to go in for medical checkup and tests under this act. This comes in the way of laborers interest. We have very many small shops and traders and most of them are run by people who are not at all rich. In a country where there are lakhs of people living below the poverty line, this kind of food standards must not come in the way of small traders to earn their livelihood. The food materials used by the poor people are subjected to this rigid act thereby affecting the people who cannot afford. Only small traders are handling this. In our country, we do not have enough testing laboratories and in Tamil Nadu, we have only 7 laboratories. When we do not have adequate facilities to go in for testing and ensuring standards, the officials take an upper hand. This even leads to corruption. As of now, there is bribe in obtaining licenses. Hence, I urge upon the government to have a re-look and a review this act and prevent officials from getting an upper hand resorting to corrupt practices. It would be better if this law is withdrawn. Mr. Chairman, I thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak on this subject concerning the youth. At the outset, I rise to support the Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Youth Development Bill 2011. The bill envisages to declare Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Youth Development to be an institution of national importance and to provide for its incorporation and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto. I am happy to mention here that the headquarters of the institute will be in our state Tamil Nadu. 
आई एम वेरी मच थैंकफुल टू द ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर फॉर दिस विजिट सर एज वी हैव बीन कॉन्स्टेंटली सेंग द प्रजेंट यूथ आर द फ्यूचर लीडर्स ऑफ आर नेशन एंड द प्रजेंट बिल इज इन दैट डायरेक्शन आई देयर फोर वेलकम इट इन माई पर्सनल कैपेसिटी एज वेल एज ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ माई पार्टी मेनी इकोनॉमिस इन द वर्ल्ड प्रेडिक्ट दैट इंडिया इज गोइंग टू एमर्ज एज एन इकोनॉमिक सुपर पावर वेरी सून आई एम श्योर द प्रजेंट बिल पेव्स द वे फॉर इंडिया टू बिकम अ सुपर पावर इन स्पोर्ट्स टू हाउ एवर वी नीड टू डू मेनी थिंग्स टू अचीव दिस आई एम कॉन्फिडेंट टू से दैट देयर इज नो डर्थ ऑफ टैलेंट्स इन इंडिया बट द स्पोर्ट फैसिलिटीज सच एज बिगर स्टेडियम्स एंड अदर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर only exist in urban areas and in cities particularly in major cities even though a major chunk of our population lives in rural areas the people living in these areas fail to get these facilities if we aim for development of sports in our country we should create sports infrastructure in the rural areas also another thing which i would like to bring to the kind notice of the government is that the government should consider sports as one of the subjects in school curriculum the central government should provide funds to schools through the respective state governments for creation of infrastructure for sports activities at school levels we can mainly identify the talent even at school level i have recently come across a news item that the honorable minister of state is seriously thinking of introducing sports as a curriculum in schools there is also a feeling that in both domestic as well as international events only the influential persons gain entry hence there is an urgent need to screen such selections the central government should allocate more funds to the state governments to create infrastructure facilities in rural areas that is creation of playgrounds purchase of sport equipments etc the central government should also make sincere efforts to conduct sports events more frequently in all parts of our country so that the students would be motivated to participate in sports events at the end i would like to say india got the boost in sports only we hosted the asian games in india in the past stop